Right, so hey guys, and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So this is going to be the last video on the Matplotlib visual series using Python. In this video, we're basically going to cover two slightly complicated visuals. Um, so one's going to be a heat map, and a second one's going to be a radial bar chart. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, if you haven't already watched the Panda series and the previous two videos on this series, I really recommend you do. I'll link them right here in the video as well as in the description. So the first things you want to do is import matplotlib. Um, so I'll just run this quickly so I have linting. Import import matplotlib dot as plt, and then we're going to import pandas as well because we're going to be working with a data file that um, has weather data. So you probably are familiar with this data set if you've already watched the other two videos. So this data set is basically a weather forecast for the next. 14 days but it was extracted a bit ago so it might be outdated now so to load in the data we're just going to create a new variable and then use pd.readcsv and then provide a link to the csv file now we can preview the data like i said it's just a uh, weather forecast related data um we're only going to need certain columns in this so we're only going to use date time temperature max temperature min average temperature and then uh conditions so I'm going to limit the data frame to only those columns. So temperature, temperature min, temperature max, uh, set date time as well, date time, uh, and then what's the other one, conditions. Cool. So that's basically going to limit our data frame to only the columns we need it. So it's basically cropped off all the rest. Um, I'm just going to do data head three to save some space. Now we can get right into the actual visualizations. So first thing we're going to do is actually work with a heat map. So to create a blank canvas for a heat map to go on, we're going to create two variables, fig, comma, ax, and then we're going to use the plt.subplots method um, to create a single figure uh, with the fig size of 10 by 6. So this is 10 inches in width and 6 inches in height. Then what we're going to do is basically define what our values for the heat map are going to be. So I'm going to create a new var variable here called df values, and then I'm going to set that to df, and then uh, I'm going to limit this to just the values. So we're going to basically be plotting the temperature, the minimum temperature, and the maximum temperature. So we'll do temp, temp min, and temp max. Now I want to show you guys something called uh, transpose, which is what we're going to use here to basically flip this table. So um, if we look at the uh, if we look at just this data frame right here, this limited one, uh, what you'll see is that um, it's showing in its current state. Now, if you use uh, if you use transpose or dot t, it will basically flip it so that it's in the inverse. So now we ha instead of having temp temp min and temp max as the columns, they have turned into rows, and then all their values have been split into individual columns. So that's what we're going to be doing up here as well. So we're going to do dot t to basically flip the table and have the data in this sort of format where we have all the three things and their values listed out as columns. So that's what is going to be stored in the df values. Then we can actually start plotting the data. So we can do plt dot i am show, which is going to help us plot a, a heat map. And we could do df values because that's what has our values that we want to plot. Um, I'm going to use a, one of the popular color maps called um, Viridis, if I'm pronouncing it right, um, and then you can basically run it. So what this will give you is is a heat map, um, which is not very clear at first sight. But basically, all it's done is it's plotted the temperature, the minimum temperature, and the maximum temperature in a sort of heat map format. Now, to make this slightly more clear, what we could do is add a color bar. So we'll do plt dot color bar. Um, and run it again now we actually see the definitions of the different colors so we can see uh that the the lighter the color is the higher the temperature the uh, and the darker the color is um the the lower the temperature so we know that now now it's still not that useful because we don't know what day um what day each one of these boxes relates to as well as what uh, what sort of um category each one of these y-axis labels corresponds to so we need to put dates on the x-axis and on the y-axis we need to put labels such as temperature min temperature max and temperature so let's do that um, we've done this before but this one is going to be slightly different so we're going to start by doing ax.sit 
uh, x ticks and basically what we're saying is we want to um, be able to set the these are ticks basically the lines going downwards so we want to be able to set the ticks on the x-axis and we need to tell it um, we need to give it a list of um, of tick of the tick positions so this one will be zero this will be one two three four five six you get the idea so we basically need to start from zero and go to whatever the max on this one is if we want it to be an interval of one if we want it to be like this you'd have to do it at an interval of two and then skip one so we don't want to skip any we're just going to do it for every so what we're going to use here is uh, np.a range what that's going to do is um, basically allow us to create that sort of range uh, or a list that I was talking about. It's basically like using range, but this one also allows us to use um, like an interval uh, of how many we want to skip each time. Uh, so I'm going to do this to be the length of the F. Um, if I run this, uh, NP is not, but okay, sorry. Uh, we have to import numpy as NP. So import numpy as NP. Just a uh, numpy is a library that's um, used underneath pandas and stuff to do a lot of numeric related um, calculations. So we can see now, instead of having the ticks every skipping every one number, it's on all of the numbers, uh, which is what we wanted to wanted it to be anyway. I can show you the output of np.arrange as well, so you guys have a better idea of what it's just done. Um, but all it's going to do is give us uh, an array going from 0 all the way to 14, which is what we need in this case. So this is helpful, right? But we don't want 0 to 14. We actually want the dates to display there. So now that we have the ticks in the right places, we can actually do just that. So we can do ax.sit x, um, x tick labels. So basically for the ticks we've just created, we're going to set labels. And then we're just going to say we want the labels to be um, our original data frame because that's what has the date time in it, dot date time. So that will basically return just the date time column uh, and all its values um, to this function. Now, I'm also going to set a few other things. I'm going to say the rotation of the text on the x-axis is going to be 45 degrees, so that it's not going to get in the way of others. I'm going to set the horizontal alignment to right as well, just to make this slightly better. Perfect. So as you can see, we have now replaced the previous x values, which went from 0 to 14, with the actual dates, so that's looking good. And we can do the same sort of thing with the y-axis as well. So... We obviously want to replace this with what each one of those things is. So what we'll do here is do ax.setYTicks. And instead of using np.arrange, because there's only three values here, we'll just do uh, the array ourselves. So 0, 1, 2, that should do the job. And then ax.setYTick um, labels. We can also do this manually because there's only three of them. So if we just look at the way that the data structured, we should be able to copy that across. So it's temperature first, then temp min, then temp max. So temperature, um, temp min, and then temp max. Uh, let me just do temp average here as well. We run this again we should be able to see uh, a perfect sort of visualization of our data. As you can see, the minimum one is sort of the one that's on the darkest side because, you know, that's um, the lowest on the color scale. And then the maximum one is sort of on the lighter side because uh, that's the highest on the color scale. And the average is sort of in between the color scale. So that's pretty much it. We can do a final step and add X and Y um, access labels and a title to this, and that will pretty much conclude the heat map chart. So if we do X dot set um, X dot set X label, and then we'll set that to dates. And we'll do the same thing for Y, uh, Y label, but that will be temperatures. And then pick the title, and that will be heat map uh, for the four parts. Run that up. Uh, take the object is oh, we have to do ax dot set title. Sorry. Run that, and we can see we have a nice looking uh, heat map, and you can then finally go ahead and save this to 
to fulfill whatever purpose you need it to. So fig .save fig, and then we just give it a file name. So I'm going to call it heatmap.png. I don't want it to be transferred, so I'm setting it to false. DPI just defines the quality. I'm just going to go with something like 150. Run that. Go to our folder and we should have a, yeah, we have a heat map uh, with all the parameters that we defined. Perfect. So that's the heat map covered. Um, what we're going to basically do next is cover the uh, radial bar chart, which is going to be slightly more interesting. Thanks for watching this video so far. I'd like to quickly shout out GoLogin, which is a company that lets you stay anonymous while browsing different accounts online and manage your private accounts. So many of you guys are active online, developing businesses on the internet, promoting yourself on social networks, etc. And with a large number of accounts comes obviously the inconvenience and risks that you may get confused by dozens of accounts like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, etc. At the same time, you're obviously constantly risking important data that you store in your browser in case you get banned on certain applications and you lose everything. There is a all-in-one solution to this actually, which is called Go Login. It's a secure platform for managing all your online accounts, which will have a lot of ton of security features like a unique digital footprint for each of your accounts, secure cloud storage under key and lock, digital footprint control through customization of settings, centralized access allocation for the team, etc. Now, if you guys would like to support the video because this video is affiliated, uh, I would highly recommend you guys to click the link in the description and try out for yourself the free trial of GoLogin or purchase it if it supports your needs. Thank you. So in order to do the radio bar chart, we, what we're going to have to do is transform our data a little bit. So in, in our current shape, this is what our data looks like. And um, what I'm going to do here is basically group this data by the conditions column and then get the number of days that um, fall under each of these conditions. So to do that, it's quite simple. Create a new variable called data frame group equals that to df group by, and then set a by column, which is going to be set to conditions because we want to group by conditions. I don't want the column to be turned into an index column, so I'm going to set that to false. And then as an aggregation method, I'm going to say I want the count of each of the duplicates. So if I look at this now, it's basically going to keep the, the unique values in the condition column. So there's four different conditions. And then for each of the duplicates, it's basically counted them up and aggregated them uh, in each of these columns. Obviously, we only need two columns. We just need the conditions and the days. So we're just going to keep the grouped uh, with the conditions. And you can pick any one of these columns. So I'm just going to say temp. And then I will rename those columns. Um, using dfgrouped.columns equals to condition and days respectively. So if we now look at dfgrouped, we should have a nice formatted data frame that is ready to be plotted into a radial bar chart. Perfect. So now that we have that, let's actually start coding the bar chart, the radial bar chart. So in order to do a radial bar chart, what you're going to need is to um, create all the different angles at which we're going to plot our data. So for that, we can actually use um, NumPy again uh, and one of its built-in built functions called LineSpace. Uh, first argument is going to be zero. Second is going to be two times mp.py because we're basically um, defining the thing to be a circle. Uh, then we basically provide it with how many um, elements or how many bars are going to be in this uh, chart so that's how many angles it needs to create so one two three four in this case so length df root um, then we basically set endpoint to false because we don't want the start and end angle to be considered in this then we can do dot two list to basically get a nice list of angles we print this out uh i think i've spelled that wrong actually uh, uh lin space L I M S P A C E. Oh, I've, yeah, pi, not pi, sorry. Dot two list. Oh, there's not, that's a lot of typos in one go. Okay, so we basically have all the angles at which we're going to draw um, our bars later on. Perfect. So now that we have that, let's also create a new uh, variable called values, which is going to have all the values that are going to be plotted. So our values column in this case is going to be the days column. So we'll do the and just take the days column values. Um, 
then we can actually start plotting um now that we have our angles and values defined we do fig comma ax like before get dot subplots method give it a fig size i'm going to keep it even because it's going to be a nice little circle the six by six and then subplot um kw you need to provide like some argument here which is going to be pol polar true because we want it to be a circular visual and when you run this instead of getting the usual um, figure you're going to get like a circular um, radial kind of plot um, which you can then draw your data upon so now that we have that we're going to basically do our bars onto this axis so bars equals x dot bar we provide it with the angles first where we want our bars to be drawn second argument is going to be the values where our um, to which our bars are going to be drawn to so it starts at uh, the middle of the the chart is very low values and the out, more outer it goes the higher the values um you can set a width as well i'm going to set that to if i can spell this width equals 0.5 set a color i'm going to do that red and then I'm, i like setting an alpha which is transparency i'm going to do 0 0.85 for this now we run this um you should get perfectly um a perfectly functioning bar chart which represents all of your categories but like last time we don't have any labels or titles or x-axis so this is a bit confusing to read so what we can do to resolve that is give it a title so it's the title um radial bar chart then we can set the um what we want to do is basically for each of these bars we actually need to know what these bars correspond to right so we'll do the same thing as last time so we'll do set x ticks and this is basically going to be um you're going to need to tell it what angles the ticks are on so provide the angles over here uh then we're going to need to set the labels themselves so if you run this now you'll only get the labels on these angles themselves the rest of them have disappeared because we've only provided them with four which is what we need and then we can actually put in the the names for these labels so set x tick labels uh, and we're going to set that to the f root and the condition column because that's what has all of our labels you run this again and we have a perfect looking um, chart which basically represents our data actually double check that by doing df root here so we can see clear had three days if you look at clear right here that's represented by three days look at partly cloudy that had the most days around 10 i believe so 10 is the the most outer part of the circle and it's that's what's represented and then overcast and rain partially clouded were one each which is why they're both sort of looking like that that's pretty much it um let's save this visual and that will basically summarize its tutorial um png concern equals false dpi equals 150 to show you what that looks like and that's it hope you guys have enjoyed this series and have learned something new throughout it um, if you guys want more tutorials on matplotlib visuals just leave the specific visual you want me to do a tutorial on in the comments and i can get back to that as soon as possible um, for our next series we're going to be trying to do some project related work or we may start doing some geopandas related analysis which would be quite useful for you guys for you guys um, as always, I'd like to thank you for all the support you guys have shown so far. Um, if you guys could click the subscribe button, that will really help me because I'm trying to reach to 100,000 subscribers. Um, long shot from now, but if everyone subscribes, we'll get there really quickly. Um, that's pretty much it. I shall see your beautiful faces in the next video. Peace.